My hair's looking a little funky this morning, you know? Maybe it's because I've been listening to Meatloaf uh, on <laughs> this morning. I'm uh, uh, kind of uh, just reminiscing just a tiny bit uh, of the, uh, the, the old days. You know, I, I grew up in the 60s, obviously seven, you know, I was a teenager in the 60s, not a teenager in the 70s, but um, is reminiscing because we're getting at, getting ready to go to my 50th high school class reunion. Wow, man. I hope I, hope I look okay for a guy who's going to his 50th class reunion. Um, but I was listening to Meatloaf, and I was listening to his song, uh, I'll Do Anything for Love, But I Won't Do That. I wish I could play it. I, could, I wish I could kind of have that playing in the background a little bit or, you know, starting out as a stinger, uh, you know, an intro, but I don't have a license for it. So I can't do that. They'll get it. They'll get all upset with, with me. But, you know, but there's a picture of Meatloaf right there. Uh, and uh, while I was listening to that, it reminded me of something that I actually want to talk to you guys about. And, that, you know, where, where you know, he, he says, he says, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. And it, it reminded me of my rules. I get a lot of comments from people about my rules over the years. I started these rules many, many years ago uh, as a result of a bad client relationship uh, and started to establish rules uh, that would say to people, here's who I am, here's what I stand for. Uh, if you go to my website here, I've got, I've got the page up here uh, where I am, uh, and let me, let me make sure that I'm, uh, I got this correctly. Okay, you can see that I've got my rules. You can go there and there it is right up there and it takes me down through here. Now, the, let me point out just a couple of the rules uh, from the perspective of meatloafs, I won't do that. And these came out of, uh, like I say, out of ba a bad relationship with the client, and they've been kind of added and edited over the years. Uh, and when when somebody new uh, is, you know, we're talking to somebody new as a potential client, or uh, you know, consulting client, or a speech, possibly uh, working together, coaching a little bit. Uh, I always want to make sure that they understand my rules. 99% of the time there is no issue whatsoever with my rules. Uh, occasionally something does come up um, and we just point out that, hey, these are our rules. And so, and, and so let me just point out to you a couple of the rules that I've got that are the, I won't do that type of, type of stuff. Uh, and, um, and, th and then let's just chat about that for, for, for a second. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, at the top, you know, I've got the thing, you know, here I've got like my values uh, are kind of at the very beginning, um, you know, but then we get down into where I do have, you know, I, you know, my rules down, down below my rule of fun, uh, you know, that we should, we should have fun rule of family. Uh, but then I got some that, that are the, I won't do that. So like, for example, the rule of RFPs. Um, Occasionally, we get the call where people will say, uh, "Hey, we're looking for a consultant, uh, and um, you know, would you fill out this RFP?" And we learned over the years that uh, no, that do that doesn't work for us. See, here's the thing about when you are in competition uh, with other 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 companies, when you join competition, when you acknowledge competition, and you are acknowledging competition when you use a uh, phrasing like you say, well, we are the best. Uh, you know, everybody says we have the best customer service, for example, or we're the best at this, uh, um, at delivery or, or, or something like that. When you use terms like that, you are saying there is another option. There is at least an, at least one more one other option, and we're the best compared to this other option. So what you're saying to the competition, I mean, what you're saying to prospects and leads uh, is you are saying we are one of a group, uh, and that is not the objective. When you want the objective of being uncopyable is that you are the only one, and so uh, and RFPs are simply designed to uh, um, get a group to be s submitting stuff. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, more often than not, the, the, the final decision in an RFP is made is based on price. And we have never competed on price. Uh, and I don't think anybody should, but we do not, oh, I shouldn't say we never have. I mean, 30 years ago, we were competing on price, but, but that stopped 
pretty pretty fast. Uh, so number one is I don't do RFPs because that puts me in a box with other other people. Number two, rule of legalese. Um, you know, we occasionally get that client who, when they want to do a consult uh, uh, consultation. They, 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 you know, they send us something and it turns out to be, you know, I, I have, you know, my, my agreement with my clients is one page and it's all plain English. And we always say, Hey, you know, uh, if, if you have to have an attorney in here, because, you know, th then it, it negates this relationship that we're, that we're going to have with each other. And, and if, and yes, there have been companies who have come back to us and, and they've said, well, you know what? Our legal department doesn't allow us to do, uh, um, you know, we have to use the agreement that they, that they, you know, or we have to use the boiler boilerplate agreement and stuff like that. And we just go, well, thank you, but but that's not how we work, so we're not going to work together. Now, in in quite a few cases, you know, they've come back and they've said, okay, all right, we'll work with you on this, and and we've been able to come come up with an amicable amicable uh, uh, solution to the situation. But if they need, if they absolutely must have legalese uh, agreement. We're not interested. Okay, we're not. We're just not going to do that. Uh, rule of no ties. I don't wear a tie. I mean that, that. I started that years ago. I don't think. I don't think I've worn a tie, maybe more than once or twice, in the last twenty years. Um, and uh, and I just don't want to wear a tie. And so we've kind of made. I shouldn't say I don't want to wear a tie. It's it's just that uh, it's kind of become a thing. Right. Uh, and I, I don't want to get into, uh, um, you know, and, and sometimes people will say, well, you know, we really like to address business. You know what? Business today is not like that. It's not it's not a big issue. Uh, rule of value. I'm not cheap. My fees are not based on time or value. Rule of travel. I don't fly coach. See, so uh, um, these are the rules that we have that we say, look, this is our business and this is how we want to do business. So my question to you is, do you have rules for your business do you have you know, do you have rules that you say here's what here's how we want to approach doing business with the marketplace and and it also it helps to uh, not only uncover your moose but it also helps to the, the ones who are not your moose you know they, they they leave they don't they end up not working with you I had a conversation with a uh, an architect uh, in the uh, luxury home business, a, a, a client last week, we were on a consulting call and he made the comment that he wants to only work with people who are willing to put in the time that it takes to work together. And he's very uh, adamant that people must understand that it requires a lot of time when they're working with him. And if he finds somebody who is saying, "No, I just want to, I just want to, uh, you know, approve the plans," and uh, you just run with it and, and try to keep me out, if they're like that, then he said he basically says, "Okay, well, that's not how I work, and so we're not going to work together." So he's kind of set up that rule. Now, I would certainly ex uh, encourage him to create his own rules and post them on the website, and that's something that I would certainly create uh, encourage you to do as well. So if you have not seen my rules, I would certainly encourage you go to my website, theadventure.com, and click on Steve's rules and have a look at those and see what I'm talking about. And then I would certainly sit down if I were you, with you, you know, if you if you're the, if you own the company, then you should come up with your own rules. If if you're on a team, then work with your team to come up with with your own rules. But be be like me, be like me, be like Meatloaf, and like he says, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. So. Write your rules and go be successful with that. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's Dad and Marketing Gunslinger. Thanks for joining me again this week. I'll be back again next week with another uncopyable uh, business video. Until then, always remember, be uncopyable. I'll see you.